Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'll take this opportunity to thank all of you for inviting me to be with you on your uh, very important conference today about civil such organization and local NGO as well. Thank you to COAST and thank you to all the participants who came today. Today I will take you uh, in a journey with me about uh, how did I land first time to Bangladesh in 1991. This was something, you remember all of us remember the cyclone which hit Bangladesh uh, very badly in 1991. Uh, nearly eight years ago, eight, eight years before that, there was another famine was hitting uh, East Africa, especially Eritrea and Tigray in Ethiopia at the time, which claimed the life of hundreds of thousands of people. This year is another flooding affecting uh, the Horn of Africa, or East Africa, Sudan, uh, Kenya, Somalia, Ethiopia, and others. So over the last 30 years or more, the negative impact of climate change affecting the globe. And I will start by saying we need to stop the negative effect of climate change. Climate change could be considered at the moment as a major crime against humanity. We need to stop it, knowing that two countries are responsible for 45% of the emission of carbon dioxide on the globe. It affects our life, our society, our economy, our industry, and our well-being. This is my first intervention with you, climate change. Climate change, which has hit Sudan badly this year, 17 out of 18 governors have been underwater. More than 800,000, 900,000 people affected. More than 120,000 houses have been destroyed. More than 500 square kilometers have been covered by water and more and more. Last year, the same happened where the flooding affected 17 out of 18 governments. It's a climate change, climate change, climate change. Stop the negative impact of climate change. This is my first intervention. The second one, which is talking about the three principles which will govern my talk. First is localization. Second, leave no one behind. Third is uh, no one behind. Third is grand bargain. Localization, leaving no one behind, and grand bargain. My third intervention will be about a formula which I made more than 20 years ago about the relationship between the local organization and the international donor organization. I've got an acronym which is said FAT and KISS. The FAT, F-A-T, is the role of the international and government and donor organization. They provide the fund, advocacy, advocate for my cause as local organization and train me. While the role of the local organization is in providing knowledge-based, innovative, sustainable solution, K-I-S-S, -S, on equal footage. This is my third point for discussion with you. The fourth point with me for you is when we have this humanitarian catastrophe like what we see in Sudan or in Lebanon or in every part of the world on a war zone, we should divide the humanitarian response fund into two parts. 70% should be used instantly for humanitarian response. 30% should be used 
25% should be used for capacity building, community building, social cohesion, and building local municipality in the same affected area. Because soon the camera will leave the scene of the affected area, no one will give you money, and you'll be very hardly finding some donor to give you money for capacity building. This is my uh, number four intervention with you before we talk about who are we. Who are we as local organization, local actors, and local civil society organization? What we need now, I've got 17 points to mention in what we need. As local organization and local civil society organization and local actors, we need much wider civil liberty space, whether this is in the south or the north or the east or the west. We need it because it's shrinking, shrinking everywhere. We need less politicization of foreign aid, less militarization and less securitization of foreign aid. And this is extremely important because now governments and the international dollars are dictating are dictating to us what we need to do. Despite the fact we know what we need more than they know. We need to, to, uh, to implement localization, not colonization. We need to come out from the colonial era, which was dictating the for was dictated to the work of the humanitarian response in different parts of the world, even developmental response. We need to build partnership, not dependency syndrome. Over the last 30 or 40 years, we failed to build local community, local organization, and credible organization. We need to implement transparency, not ambiguity in processes and procedures that we apply, especially on the ground for the small local organization. We need empowerment, not dictating. Guides, guidelines, and guidance. Empower me to be your partner where we together can make the guidelines and can create the guidance and can go together. We need fertilization of what? Of the local organizations and the local NGOs and CSOs. Not the certification of their fields of work would drive their field of work up, unfortunately. We need involvement to be involved in a participatory approach at every stage of the designing stage, the implementing stage, reporting stage, and others. We need to involvement, not exclusivity, by others and for others. We need UN agencies and international donors and government to know that ownership, ownership of aid or even foreign aid belongs to whom? Belongs to the poor people in my local community. Belongs even your foreign aid belongs to the poor people in my own community. I am the owner of the widow. I am the owner of the displaced. I am the owner of the sick man or sick woman. I am the owner of the refugee and uh, destitute. And its mandate should be needs driven not politically driven, military driven, security driven, or even privately driven by private companies. We need to draw the future, we as local organizations, the future of our society to safeguard the future generations to come. We need to have local solutions for all our problems, from COVID-19 
counter extremism, radicalism, and terrorism, and others. Because we have the know-how, because we have the innovative methods, because we have the sustainable solution that we can provide to everyone. We need to be listened to. Somebody should be listening to us. Everyone should be listening to us. We are, because why? Because we are, you know, I know what I want you to listen to me, to listen to us as local organization, because we are what? We are the poor people's pulse, feelings, emotions, dreams, hope, souls, and source of happiness. Because we are with them 24 seven, every day, every month, every second, every minute. You come and go, but we stay behind. We need to inscript a smile in the hearts of the people and on the face of humanity. This is our role to do as local organization. We need to be taken more seriously, not to be taken for a ride by others. We need everyone to know that the more you delay the empowerment of the local CSOs and NGOs, the more difficult it becomes to complicate uh, finding a global solution for all our problems. We are the people who have the knowledge-based, innovative, sustainable solution. Take us as partner, not as recipient, because we know what is happening on the ground and with partnership together and partnership together, we can do it. My last message to all of us in the room is keep connecting, keep communicating, keep networking with everyone from the local ground with the government offices, as well as with the INGO, as well as with the international agency and UN agencies. Keep networking, communicating, and connecting. This will be, connection will be our protection. And we'll keep connecting with everybody. Thank you very much for listening to me. And I congratulate you for this, this very successful Zoom conference. Thank you, Bangladesh. God bless you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.